This is the new Barnes & Noble Nook Glowlight Plus 7.8. It has a resolution of 1404 by 1872 with 300 ppi. It has a Neonode Z Force IR screen. It's waterproof. Underneath the hood is a Freescale Solo Light 1 GHz processor, 1 GB of RAM, and 8 GB of internal storage. It does not have an SD card. There's two page turn buttons on either side, very little space between them. There is a little end button here, it's raised. You, this is a home button. This is your library. This is the store. This is the current book that you're reading. This is Barnes & Noble Nook readouts and a search button. At the top here you see a few things. Uh, Peter who registered the device, the time, and the glow light, Wi-Fi, and battery symbol. If you just type, like if you just press there, this is your quick settings. We'll get more into the glow light test later on in the video, but it shows you the battery life, 64%. You can click on see all settings. But this is one of the first Barnes & Noble Nooks with Bluetooth. So instead of using the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you can connect up a wireless speaker, a pair of wireless headphones, etc that you can also customize the glow light settings in this as well but you actually have some settings for the library so download items only on red items show samples so if we don't want any samples to show up you want to click that download and storage is another option here you can establish over wi-fi only new magazine issues you can manage your storage, but you can manage your storage here and you can actually see with the, some of the samples and stuff like that, um, there isn't a whole lot that's allocated to the OS, but here you can actually move the books that are on your device to the cloud. So this is your library. This is like where all of your content is. If you have sideloaded content, it's important that you click this button here, which basically refreshes like everything that's like on your device. So new issues of newspapers, of magazines and so on, full page refresh as you showed. By default, it shows, you know, cover art of everything. You can click here and see like more of like a gridded approach. You also can see your shelves. This is the first Nook e-reader with a 7.8 inch screen. They've only made six inches. so. All the content here is easily readable on a larger device. So you have the carousel here. You click on like a, you know, a title that you want, sorted by default, an overview. You can click read more to see the total overview. You can uh, download a free sample, add it to a wish list, and then they have like tabs at the top for customer reviews. And then editorial reviews. So this is from the publisher and then more like this. You can do top matches, bestseller, title A to Z, Z to A, low to high, high to low, oldest, newest, and so on. New York Times bestsellers, new releases, Nook channels, Nook recommends coming soon. So you can actually do pre-orders on this, uh, you know, books that are cheap as hell, romance, you know, they change all of this like all the time, but most of these are pretty consistent. Nook Readouts is a program that's been integrated into Nooks for about the last four and a half years or so. You can see here that the daily picks are basically author interviews. You can actually read excerpts of specific books. It's all very curated. You can go to serial reads and actually read like serialized fiction. So it's kind of like a way that you can kind of uh, read free books right on Nook readouts. So we'll do the page turn buttons first because they offer a few interesting things. For example, if you tap twice, it goes chapter by chapter. So you don't actually have to go back and visit the table of contents. Also, if you press and hold, you actually have a rapid page turn system integrated that just zips through the book, which is very nice. Limited refreshing as well until you let go. Long pressing gives you some options like create note, just opens up the keyboard. You have highlight, copy, share, 
dictionary and search in the book. You also have the definition down below as well. If you tap in the top right corner, you make a bookmark. You can click the little double A button and that gives you font size. You can change it live. You can click on the font style. We'll just choose Mundo. You have regular, which allows you to do thicker, thinner, and regular. You also have margins and a couple tabs for line spacing and justification. The three dots on the top right corner offer a few more options. Share, remove bookmark, jump to page, find in book, and view details. View details will actually jump you to the entry of the book on the store. You can click here to look at the table of contents. You can click on anywhere and you jump directly to that spot. There's a number of different facets to it. One is contents, which is basically the table of contents. Highlights and notes, these are all the highlights or notes that we've made inside of the book. There's different bookmarks that we've made. Lookups is all of the different words that we've actually looked up in the dictionary. The PDF experience is quite limited on the Barnes & Noble. You can't pinch and zoom, and there's no way to even double tap to change the scale. Although you can do long presses, which is actually pretty useful because that allows you to take notes, highlights, copies, look up in dictionaries, and so forth. So you get a lot of the options from the e-reading experience. If you go to the top, you basically just get the same dropdown you found in the e-reading experience. And if you click here, you get the same menu, but there isn't any way to really change the scale or anything. If you do long, uh, press the page turn buttons on the side, it doesn't have the jump where it goes from chapter to chapter because there's no definitive table of contents that this can refer to. It's all side loaded too, so none of the features on the e-reading e e experience really translate into here. So basically what you see is what you get. If you click on the right hand side here where it says Peter, you actually go to the profile. First of all, with the Nook you can establish different profiles. So this is the admin profile but you can also set up profiles for like your kids and you lock them into lock them out of specific features. So if you click on the three dots here, you change avatar, parental controls, manage content, change name, delete profile. So let's click on parental controls. So you can actually access reads for kids. So this will only show Barnes and Noble kid friendly content. So it is quite blue and that is because it is blue. We're on the cool mode. You do have the ability to change the brightness level, turn it off entirely or use night mode manual, which means you can actually change the blue LEDs, turn them down and turn up the orange LEDs. I need to mention something that the extreme right is extremely orange. You have to be careful with that because it, although it is cancelling the blue, this in and of itself can be a little bit extreme on your eyes. The bar is majoritively orange from about the 30% mark all the way to the 100, so it is prioritizing the orange LEDs over the blue. Now we have seen a couple units and it is not evident on camera, but uh, we have a couple tears in the screen that we have heard reports of with these devices. and. We've seen that from Barnes & Noble in the past. Although the light distribution is actually on point, they do still have some stuff to work out through. They have to balance their white balances better and they have to make sure their screens aren't susceptible to tearing. In the settings menu, you can actually set up an auto mode which will color shift the e-reader throughout the day. There's 10 blue LEDs and if you change it over to the orange, there are nine orange LEDs and they can be on at the exact same time when you slide the slider bar. All in all, this is a great e-reader, primarily because it's much larger than any Nook before. So a 7.8 inch device allows more screen real estate devoted towards the reading experience, more text can fit on a page, certainly if you increase the fonts, this is quite evident. You don't really have to do a lot of pinching and zooming, although this doesn't really support it because it doesn't have a capacitive screen, so it doesn't have like five point multi-touch or anything like that. But for PDFs, it's a little bit lackluster. Certainly if you're reading big PDFs like we were, manual page turn buttons, a dedicated home button instead of just a back button, which what most vendors do. The reading experience is tremendous. Uh, then the glow light experience, if you customize it right, it's really good. If you fled from the Nook ecosystem, and this Nook will bring you back. For goodyreader.com, my name is Michael. And this is Peter. Everybody take care.